Welcome to Financial Math for Actuarial Exam 2. We're going to look at problem 7.19 from Kellison's book. We'll be finding the total interest paid on a bond bought at a discount. The last four videos, 107 through 110, we've looked at some examples of bonds bought at discounts and premiums and thought about the amortization table. Some of the ideas from that video are going to come up, those videos are going to come up in this video. So we have a $1,000 par value five-year bond with a coupon rate of 10% payable semi-annually, redeemable at par, bought to yield 12% convertible semi-annually. We'll be finding the total of the interest paid column in the bond amortization table, but we will not have to construct the whole table. And in fact, there's a relatively easy way to solve this problem if your conceptual understanding of what goes on with bonds bought at premiums and discounts is real solid. You can solve this problem pretty quickly. If you, for some reason, are not remembering the concepts well enough, or if you're feeling anxious during the exam, there is going to be an algebraic way you can solve it. That's harder, takes longer, but we will see that it gives you the same thing as the easier way. Before I solve the problem, also notice that when the bond is redeemable at par, I've said that uh, if your coupon rate is lower than the yield rate as it is here, the bond will be bought at a discount. If it was the other way around, with the coupon rate being higher than the yield rate, then the bond would be bought at a premium. When the bond is bought at a premium, you are paying more than the redemption value when you buy the bond. That means that uh, the coupon payments to you cover more than the interest that is owed to you, and that causes the book value of the bond to be written down over time. On the flip side, this situation, when the bond is bought at a discount, the coupon payments from the government or the corporation to you are not enough to cover the interest that they owe, so the bond book value must be written up. That is the situation here. And if you think about it, Okay, so those coupon, in the case of a discount, the coupons are not enough to cover the interest. They are all interest in that sense. So if you can figure out the, the amount of discount of the bond, just take all the coupon payments and then add the amount of discount, and that will be the answer. That will be the total interest paid. And that will be the total interest paid column from the amortization schedule, and you can know that without actually constructing the schedule. But first, we need to find the price of the bond. Now, you certainly can use the basic formula to find the price of the bond, but we've been using the premium discount formula recently. I will reuse that again here, both to emphasize its use and to illustrate in the end why the intuitive conceptual approach is equivalent to a more difficult algebraic approach. Also, um, you know, when, we, when the bond is redeemable at par, as it is here, we can use the face value in this formula. So we, we wrote the formula as the face value plus the face value times the quantity R minus J, where R is the semi-annual coupon rate and J is the semi-annual yield rate, times A N J. In general, though, F needs to be replaced by C, the redemption value, and R needs to be replaced by G, the modified coupon rate. In that case, the formula would look like this. But at, in the present case, since uh, the bond is redeemable at par, you can think of it either way. I think I will focus on thinking of it this way, to focus on the more general fact um, as something that you might have to deal with in general. But in both cases here, the face and redemption values are both 1,000. R, the uh, semi-annual coupon rate, and G, the modified semi-annual coupon rate, are the same. They're both 10% divided by 2, which is 5%. The yield rate is 12% divided by 2, which is 6%. And is 10. We've got a 5-year bond with semi-annual coupons. We have a 10 there and a 0 0.06 here. So it's pretty quick to find the price from this. You can see right there, that's 1,000 times negative 0 0.01. That would be negative 10. If we can quickly figure out A10, we can quickly find the price of the bond and then uh, subtract that price from $1,000 to get the amount of the discount, and then add in all the coupons to get the final answer. All right, that is the quick way you want to be able to solve this quickly based on understanding the, the principle. Take the 1.06, that's 1 plus j, take its reciprocal to get v, raise it to the 10th power, I'm figuring out a10 here, subtract from 1, divide by 0 0.06, a10 is about 7.36, times negative 10, is negative 7360. That's what this thing here is. Negative 7360. Positive 7360 would be the amount of the discount then. I'm 
Adding that to 1,000, which really means I'm doing a subtraction, the price of the bond is $926.40. But again, the amount of the discount, amount of discount is positive 7360. That's going to be all interest when the bond is bought at a discount. Also, the coupons are all interest. Find all the coupons and now add the amount of the discount to get the final answer for the total interest paid. What is the amount of all the coupons? Coupons, that's going to be 10 coupons uh, times F times R or times C times G is times 1,000 times 0 0.05. We get 10 times 50. We get $500 for the amount of all the coupons. That's all interest. This is all interest. Add those up to get the total interest paid. The final answer for the total interest is going to then be $573.60. Okay? That's definitely the best way to go for this problem, knowing the concept that when the bond is bought at a discount, not only are the coupons all interest, but also the amount of the discount will be interest. You need to add those together. All right? But again, let's pretend you're in the anxiety of an exam and that doesn't come to you quickly, but you're thinking about formulas and you're a formula person um, and you're trying to derive what to do. You Maybe you're thinking this way. <coughs> Excuse me. I need to add up all the interest payments. And then you say to yourself, okay, now what's the formula for those interest payments? And maybe you have it memorized, which I think is probably a good thing to do for this exam. Let's go ahead and write down what those interest payments are. I have talked about this in recent videos. Um, let's go ahead and use C and G instead of F and R, the general case. IT is going to be C times J plus C times in parentheses G minus J times 1 minus VJ to the N minus in parentheses T minus 1 power. I can also distribute the minus sign through to get N minus T plus 1 power here. And you're looking at this kind of thing and maybe feeling pretty good because your algebra skills are good. You know you should distribute the summation through the parentheses. You look at that and say there's no t's there. That's constant with respect to t. So adding up n of those gives me n times c times j. Uh, you know, okay, I could use FOIL here, but I could also think of it as multiplying c times, in parentheses, g minus j times 1, and then also separately times negative vj to that power that you see there. When I multiply it times 1, that's another constant with respect to t, so when I add those up, I get n times c times in parentheses g minus j. You could distribute the n times c through those parentheses to get this, and you, you're feeling happy. The n c j's cancel. That's good. You also have a minus, okay, c g minus j times this, the that part can get factored out of the summation. You get C times G minus J times the summation of the VJs to these different powers. T goes from 1 to N. You're wondering, maybe that's A N. And in fact, you double check it and you see that it is. When T is 1, this is uh, the power will be nth power. When T is 2, um, negative 2 plus 1 will be negative 1. So you have vj to the n minus 1 power, etc. When t is n, n minus n plus 1 is 1. You have vj to the first power. So that is the same thing as a and j. And you can simplify your final formula then to being this, ncg, which would be the total of all the coupons, right? f times r equals c times g. Those are the coupon amounts, and I've got n of them. And then I have a minus C times G minus J, A, N, J, J. This is looking kind of familiar. This is, that part is looking similar to what you see up here, except there's a plus sign there and there's a minus sign down there. Hmm. Is this correct? Remember back up here, when you buy the bond at a discount, G is less than J, so we get a negative quantity here. We're adding a negative quantity so that the price was less than the $1,000 here. Um, down here, this is still a negative quantity, but I'm subtracting it. So if I include the difference in this, this is really the amount of the discount when G is less than J, which it is here. G is less than J. This is still the total of all the coupons. 
So you really are taking the total of all the coupons, which was $500, and really adding the amount of the discount, which was the $7360. This is going to give the same thing, thing $573.60. That is the right answer. This intuitive approach has been confirmed algebraically. Let's just briefly, before we end the video, think about what would happen in the context of a bond bought at a premium. G would be bigger than J. This would be positive. The price would be more than 1000 The amount of the premium is not interest. The coupon payments cover more than interest. They write the bond book value down. The amount of interest paid would be the amount of the coupons then minus the amount of the premium. It would be uh, a subtraction of a positive number minus a positive number. Down here, we really would be subtracting a positive number in that case. This would be this part without the minus sign would be the amount of the premium. The total interest paid, again, would be the total of all the coupons minus the amount of the premium in that situation. Okay? So you should be able to think of it intuitively when the bond is bought at a premium, too. And that's the end of this video.